Casey, I don't know if you've got any particular insights into which of these buckets it might be, competition, uh, kind of an auction recession, or a broad digital ad collapse, but the implications are huge depending on which it is. Absolutely. And when I have been reading uh, my analysts this morning, I'm really leaning toward this being an Apple issue. Uh, when it changed the way that advertisers are able to measure the effectiveness of their ads, they really took the wind out of this market. And it's going to take maybe years for the ad industry to figure out how to get its measurement tools back to where they used to be. So in the meantime, I think it's going to be a world of pain for companies like Snap uh, and Twitter that were relying on it. But Ranjan, it does seem like there's this issue of companies pulling back their spend, not necessarily having to do with targeting specifically. Yeah, companies are going to be pulling back their spend in general. Listen, marketers are going to be running. And as you said, the easiest money to turn off is going to be the first. But I do think it's really important. And I'm glad we got Snap and Twitter back to back because on the surface level, they look very similar. Hundreds of millions of users, slowing revenue growth. And they're both caught in the middle of Apple, Facebook, Google, TikTok, the most compet uh, competitive digital ad ecosystem ever. But I do think Snap is actually well positioned for the future. And I know that sounds ridiculous when the stock is down 38% today. But again, here you have a company with a strong, engaged user base, a history of product innovation and actually successfully delivering on it and strong, stable leadership. And I think investors, because Q3 and Q4 and maybe even Q1 into next year are impossible to forecast based on any models of from the prior decade, I think you have to start looking at which companies are genuinely positioned to succeed in a world where tracking will never be the same. Casey, I'm curious what you think of what Ranjan just said. Do you have any similar optimism about Snap's ability to keep on innovating? And are you surprised that this Apple targeting issue is so persistent? I mean, they've been working to work around it. Um, are, do you, would you have thought they would have made more progress by now? Somewhat. And the reason is that these companies keep telling us that it's all going to be all right, right? I think Snap really downplayed what the impact of this was going to be. And they've spent the past year uh, sort of having to amend their guidance time after time. So I think sort of shame on those companies for, uh, for, for maybe not being as straight with us, although I'm sure they would say that you know, they've been surprised uh, with what they've seen, too. That said, I do agree there is reason for optimism with Snap. This is a company that really has um, the attention of a younger generation. And I think Snap, along with TikTok, are you know, best positioned to uh, keep that attention, you know, through the next, let's say, half a decade. So lots of opportunity there. But of course, Snap's going to have to figure out how to execute on it. Yeah, that's right, Casey. And worth noting that Snap added more users than expected in the second quarter and is forecasting the growth of more users than expected in the third quarter. But Rondon, back to your optimism about Snap. You know, Casey just mentioned TikTok. Snap mentioned the more competitive ad environment. How do you see Snap's ability to compete uh, uh, playing out when they are going to have to pull back spending on some of these um, some of these things that were longer term bets? Yeah, I think, again, what's really important is revenue diversification is going to be difficult for everyone. And when we're talking about iOS 14 and Apple's privacy changing everything, I do think, I agree, it changed everything. I don't think we're ever going back to the world of perfectly efficient precision to, uh, tracking and measurement that marketers got addicted to in the 2010s. I think we're going to have to move away towards a more brand-oriented world, and that's exactly where I think Snap is very well positioned. Again, Snap, like sponsored lenses, was introduced in 2015. I remember at the time, it was one of the more innovative ad products I've seen, yet it never really took off because everyone was solely focused on performance we're going to see more and more. Everyone's trying these workarounds like conversion API, CAPI, and all these other technologies. I don't think we're ever going back to that world. So I think companies that have genuine product innovation, genuine advertising innovation, and a strong user base, as Casey said, and a strong, younger, active, engaged, happy user base, I think those are the ones, again, that's why Snap is well positioned. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.